War Gamers, Josh here, excited to bring you another bolt action tutorial. And this week up on the docket, we have the Soviet Maxim machine gun decked out for winter. Let's jump straight into it. I'm gonna start off by cutting everything off of the attached metal sprues and using a metal file to clear every all of the extra sprue gates and additional pieces overflow and the like off of it. The only piece of this model that actually needed assembly as the rest of it was single piece uh, characters. I attached the wheels with a little bit of super glue and then attached the actual top of the Maxim machine gun into place with that same super glue. Primed everything in a nice coat of white, careful not to obscure any of the details and made sure that everything was good because I wanted it prepped for speed paints. First color up is going to be Forest Sprite. That color is going to be used across the entirety of the body, chassis, wheel carriage of the Maxim machine gun, as well as the ammo case sitting on there next to it. It's also going to be used across one of the Russian's helmets, the only one who's wearing a helmet, as well as the ammo case in the hand of the Russian and the binoculars that the third Russian is holding. After that, I'm gonna switch over to ochre clay. Uh, this is a very nice green, yellow, olivey type color. And I feel like it makes a good khaki color for the Soviet winter uniforms. So I spread it all across his uniform, careful not to spread too far into any of the other sections. Moving on, we're gonna to go to the color Speed Paint Ashen Stone, and we are going to use it to spread all over the gentleman who is laying down because the Soviets used three different colored uniforms during their time period. Their over great coats were either made in a white, in a khaki, or in a greenish olive -y color. We're gonna move over to Ancient Honey now and fill out the jacket of the third Russian here. This is the one holding on to the binoculars. And we are going to use this as the khaki color for this last Soviet. Then we're gonna use grim black across all of the boots for each of the soldiers. With the one who is kneeling, I was not super concerned about my lines as the majority of his kneecaps are going to be covered by being on the ground and covered in snow. But the rest of them, I was a little bit more careful with where the boots ended. We're gonna to move to peachy flesh for all of our skin tones. And Satchel Brown is going to be used for all of the belts and straps and bags, anything that would be made out of leather. I also used Satchel Brown as the coat for the stock of the PPSH that the Russian is holding on to.
So here I decided to switch up my usual Russian painting a little bit, and I chose the color Bony Matter to do a light leather glove across the only glove miniatures in here. And then I'm going to use a glaze of matte white to help bring back some of the white detailing to the soldier that's laying down that I made a little bit too dark gray with that speed paint. I wanted to bring back the actual white in the miniature while still leaving the gray shadows. We're gonna use the color Talos bronze here for the bullets inside of the case leading up to the maximum and broadsword silver for the barrel and magazine of the PPSH in his hands. After that, I'm gonna start by gluing the based soldier on there and we're gonna use Battlefield Snow, Frozen Tufts, Winter Tufts, and Deadland Tufts, as well as some Battlefield Rocks to really fill out the scenery and help make it feel a little bit more alive. I placed the tufts sporadically with various sizes directly on the bare base to give a little bit of variety and difference in plant texture and plant life. Tacky glue and I'm gonna spread it all around using a toothpick, careful to get it into every crack and crevice that I could find. Uh, I left the layers uneven so that the snow would dry in different heights, much like naturally falling snow does. I wanted to make sure everything was really well covered with glue across the entire base so that when I set it inside of the snow, I could just wiggle it around and make a huge mess uh, and really make sure that I fill out that base with, with varying levels of snow. it to look like this machine gun was dragged into place. So I took the wheels and I dragged them across the base before finally settling it in its spot like it had been wheeled there. Uh, I attached each of the pieces using super glue and lined everything up so that it would dry. And then I placed some battlefield rocks randomly all the way around so that they would dig into the snow a little bit and just help create a little bit more variety across the base. The very, very last thing that I did was spread the snow that fell into the bushes so that they had some snow in them, but the, the grass was still poking through. The last thing I did was add a branch to really sell the winter effect. And this is how it all turned out. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm Josh, this is War Games Delivered. And until next time, we'll see you on the battlefield.